For pleasure, you have to go into vulgar regions, the kind that would be dark and empty to a fault, so that everything appears ten times bigger than it really is, where you could inhale the excess and surplus of presence. Plywood would star and oil paint would undress the walls in order to draw out the misery of the landscape. And maybe you could hear the really loud singing of integrated circuits of a really bad quality. You would wear a cellulose polo shirt, bacteriostatic pants, simple cuts, coarse material, self-adhesive tape, hybridized bubble wrap, knitwear glitches with a twist of cheap metal. Now this is already a promising landscape. Only in such a place can a truly sweeping practice of pleasure arise. I don't even know where I am now. Maybe I'm at the improperly segregated trash heap. On the route of a motocross circuit. Maybe I'm digging in someone's installation. Kim Kardashian has 32 million followers. That's more than Jesus. So how can I know where I am? I only know that you're also here with me. I can't wait for our time spent together. pleasure, one of the few bloody, raw emotions felt by mammals when a mammal is happy with the situation it finds itself in. Pleasure, being with people instead of being alone, being alone instead of being with people. Sex and its tactile derivatives, food. <laughs> When someone dumps a bucket of compliments on your head. When you experience deja vu and the pointless feeling of discovering something. Like when a dog bites a bone. Like when a dolphin gets a reward for a ball trick. Like abundance like psychoactive events and actions, visual, auditory, gustatory hallucinations, thought, thought hallucinations, emotional, emotional hallucinations, hallucinations especially, affects instead of decisions. Pleasure, sometimes tasteless goosebumps, A hot sea laid out with sand that's cold and sharp, like a Japanese santoku knife. Pleasure. Listening to girls with speech impediments, hungover girls, or girls who are quite simply sad, who, by the imperfections of their language, logic, or endorphins, 
Speak a lot more warmly and slowly. Touching someone during a conversation, as though you accidentally remembered something or understood something. The body is then like a live wire and offhandedly finds a hard to hang thread of understanding between thoughts. Also pleasure. Hanging around vast beaches or sidewalks narrow as hotel corridors, opening the third eye and with the extremely relaxed cells of the body, seeing an image that the system suggested for your laptop's wallpaper the day before. That happens to one in a million people. And to space out and allow your eyes to hang idly. Do nothing, nothing to do. I said, empty your mind. Empty your mind. Be formless. Shapeless. Like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow, or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Now all the pleasure is yours. Eighty percent of the body drenched from the inside, inside is, occupied is occupied by water. Eighty percent sponge from skin and organs, absorbing everything that is introduced into the circulatory system, the digestive system, and subcutaneous tissue. Bones in liquid form aren't a frame anymore. Rather, Rather they, they try, try to keep pace, pace going with, with the, the flow of the, the body's, body's activities. Water saturated with sugar, wireless network, and words of high boiling point. Everything subservient to the total desire of total oversaturation. Muscles soaking under the skin, rinsing the movement of upper and lower limbs. Inflow and outflow of veins. Drinking straight from the esophagus so you don't waste time. This water swells and bulges. It's everywhere. Inside me and outside me. I feel as if I were under it. For underwater conditions, you can hear me pretty well. I'm scared that if I stay in this water for longer, I'll never smoke a cigarette again. The only way out is to drink a little of it. Slurp.
slurp. Faith in common fictions allows us to survive and obtain some meaning from under the counter, to gather in the direction of belonging to a larger whole. Power feeds on the great fictions which roar outside the doors to this building. Religions founded on vows thrown about readily in moments of lameness. Nations packed with hard ideologies. Banknotes of paranormal denominations and happy ends. It's impossible to separate fiction from reality since we never managed to separate the wheat from the chaff. Everything has merged and won't unmerge. And what once met won't unmeet. Great fictions are useful for carrying out the test of suffering. Great fictions don't suffer. Great fictions aren't afraid. The nation won't cry if you sing the national anthem out of tune because the nation doesn't have a good ear, nor any awareness. The British pound won't suffer if it loses value. Only those who believe in it may suffer. All intersubjective matters depend on what we agree, agree. on. So maybe, so maybe let's agree to fuck global, global fictions. fictions. And that in that the fiction sector, private fiction is juicier than any other. Imagine you're a cell in your body. Imagine you come in and no one notices you. Swallow, 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 swallow. Swallowing is a basic function for the organism. You can swallow a tough situation or hurtful words. Or, for example, a tough nut. Swallowing is a reflex based on the movement of nourishment, liquid or saliva, from the oral cavity, through the throat and esophagus, to the stomach. Or dropping a subject from your thoughts lower and lower, so that it goes deep in your ass. It's far easier to swallow a donut. I would say this out loud, but as a post-cellular eukaryote, I don't possess a speaking apparatus of my own. I have, however, numerous extra qualities in the shape of dental composite, artificial colorings, and affects. I'm a cell of very symbiotic origin. I stretch or narrow my borders and horizons as I see fit. I've already created many connections and I easily create new ones. I'm a loose cell. As a very emotional energy source, I easily get addicted, happily create colonies. Only you can't see nor hear me. Which, considering my aims are pleasure and multiplication, seems quite harsh. I would gladly lie under some blooming cacti now. Dig my foot in the sand. 
would love to drink a vodka tonic on the rocks, eat a miracle fruit, enjoy the sun. If I wasn't a post-cellular eukaryote, if I wasn't a belonging-to-nothing organelle that wanted to stick itself to something and create a pleasant organism of hybrid descent, reform life a bit, I'm dreaming of the primordial soup, a hypothetical prebiotic mixture, a huge broth in which everything gropes everything, bulges, bubbles up. Subcellular organisms start to form cooperative groups here. And me, dear, sweet little cell, all alone, descending from an ancestor resembling a bacteria that wasn't able to survive beyond the cell membrane. Me, I'm able. I advance with an unvarying movement, a slightly drunk movement. I jump down my own throat. I slide down that elementary slide with a warehouse of words at the back, and I feel somehow under caress. I need a massage, maybe with velveteen saliva wrought on a piece of tongue. Or maybe with a foreign body. Maybe some edible body. Hmm. 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 Excitement relies on techno-production, on the transformation of organs, fluids, nourishment, dreams, and images, on the transformation of migraines and Xanax into an attractive arrangement of letters and images. In this very moment, with the help of words, I'm practicing identification with that which was introduced into my body. As hot capitalism dictates, I identify with the image of my body. Even though I guess I wouldn't like to become a JPEG. It's impossible to separate fiction from reality, since we never managed to separate the wheat from the chaff. Everything has merged and won't unmerge, and what once met won't unmeet. My body is a three-dimensional political machine disobeying the economic regulations of pleasure. My body is an end device in which all information touched by me is saved. My body supports the fiction of my subjectivity with all its biochemical support. My body is a self-validating event. My body is an inborn trait. My body is not broken, undeniable, incontestable. My body is the original manifestation of my organism. My body is a political marketing strategy. My body is an ideology associated with everyday mythology. My body is everything that I make up for myself. In the body's landscape, there's a lot of room for love. Through the digestive channels, I'm letting love into this landscape. Maybe I don't have what you're missing, but I know how what you're missing functions in a world where you can live without it. Everybody's chanting mantras that there's nowhere to direct our political desires, 
because the politically infected zone doesn't give a fuck about our desires. But we have each other after all. That which we can't get from the government, from soaring buildings with expensive strong spines and holy pictures. That which you can't get from your boss and never will, we can ask each other for. And we can give to each other, always delivered on time. You are my glimmer of hope in these ugly, ugly times. I love you in 427 different ways. I don't know if this is just post-humanistic or actually post-realistic, pre-internet or post-internet pre-cultural and post-culinary. I don't even know where I am now. It's impossible to separate fiction from reality since we never managed to separate the wheat from the chaff. Everything has merged and won't unmerge. And what once met won't unmeet. Maybe I'm at the improperly segregated trash heap on the route of a motocross circuit. Maybe I'm digging in someone's installation. Kim Kardashian has 32 million followers. That's more than Jesus. So how can I know where I am? I only know that you're also here with me. I can't wait for our time spent together.